Hello everyone and welcome to this lab session. In this session, we will look at how you can create your first RDS database in AWS. So for that, we will go to the search console and search for RDS. And here you can see we have the managed relational database service. So let's click on this. So this is how your console looks like for Amazon RDS. And over here you can see you have the databases option. So you can create your first database either going to this databases option or create database option from here. So I will go to the databases option and create database. Now in order to create a database you have two options either you can go for a standard create. For this standard create option you have to configure each and everything on your own considering whatever services you want, what are the VPC networks you want for this particular database. But if you want to create your database with the help of the recommended best practices, then it is recommended that you go for easy create option. But I would recommend to always go for the standard create as in this option you have the flexibility to control each and every settings that you want for your database. So after that we have the option for engine type. So as you can see these are the six database engine types that Amazon RDS supports. So you have Amazon Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. So for this tutorial we will be looking at the most common one which is MySQL. So let's click on this option and over here then you have the version like what version you want. So we will go with the default version MySQL 8.0.27 and then you have templates. So the first template in the list we have is production. So this template is always used when you have your database up and running and ready to be published publicly or in your private network and where you want that database to be deployed. So this is the production environment where you want it to be used. Then you have the development and test environment template where you can have your developer developing some sort of algorithms or logics for the database and test or testing them. And then you have a free tier so we will be going with the free tier option. But I would like to show one thing over here that for the production and development test you have an option for availability and durability as well. So what does that mean? So basically for the deployment option you can actually create multiple backups of your databases. So as you can see for the first option you have the feasibility to create a primary database cluster and then two readable standby DB instances as well. But if you go for multiple AZ DB instances in that it will create a primary DB instance for you and then a single standby DB instance in different AZ. So AZ is basically regions by the way. And then you have the single DB instance option. So this is the most basic one. So you do not have any standby DB instances and you only have a single DB instance to work with. So for the free tier we actually get this single DB instance. So we will use the free tier as of now. And then in the settings you have the DB instance identifier. So basically DB instance is an isolated database environment running in the cloud inside the AWS. Basically it is a building block of Amazon RDS. So you need to give an identifier name over here. So the name I would take is RDS instances and then you need to give the credentials. So I will go with the admin username. Then you have the option to auto generate a password or you can create your own password as well. So I will create my own password over here. The next thing is the DB instance class. So basically the DB instance class determines the computation and memory capacity of an Amazon RDS DB instance. So as of now you can see over here that we have versatile classes selected and these two options the standard classes and the memory optimized classes are disabled. The reason is that we are not in the development or test environment or either in the production. So if you enable one of them you will find that that also gets enabled. So for the free tier you have versatile classes mode only and over here you can see that we have dbt2 micro, dbt3 micro and dbt4g micro that can be used. So for this tutorial we will stick with the basic one and you can see that these are the two basic ones. So you have dbt2 micro which provides you one virtual CPU with one gigabyte of RAM and it is not EBS optimized by the way. And then you have dbt3 micro so it provides you two virtual CPUs with one gigabyte of RAM and a network of 2085 Mbps. So I would recommend going with this settings for dbt3 micro and then just include the previous generation classes as well. So this option is for those users who have been using this RDS service 
and have not upgraded to an upgraded version of the DB instance. All right, so then we have the storage option. So for storage, you have general purpose SSD, provision, IOPS and magnetic. So we will go with the general purpose SSD for now. And the allocated storage is 20 gigabytes. By the way, you also have the option to auto scale the storage. So if you feel a need like your database is going to take more than 20 gigabytes, so you can actually enable the storage auto scaling as well. But if it's not required, you can simply just disable it for now. So as you can see, the maximum and minimum that you can go is from 21 GB to a maximum of 16384 gigabytes. So let's just keep it enabled for now. And then you have an important setting that is the connectivity. So basically, whenever you create a database instance, so as of now, like we are creating a MySQL database, so that needs to be assigned to a particular VPC. Now that VPC is a virtual private network where all of your other resources for AWS also exist. So for now, we will go with the default option or if you want, you can also create a new one. But it is always recommended that even if you want to create a new VPC, you always go to the VPC console in the EC2 instances and create a VPC there and then move back to this connectivity option and just select the VPC that you want. So for now, we are going with the default VPC and whatever resources that you want it to connect with this database particular instance. So you need to make sure that this is the VPC that you also assign to those resources as well. And then moving on, we have the subnet group. So we will keep the subnet group default as well. Same instructions for subnet group. If you want another subnet group for this particular database, so go to the subnet group option in the EC2 instances dashboard and just create a new one for yourself. Then you have an interesting option over here that says public access. So it is selected no for now. So if you select no, only those resources that are inside that VPC can only connect. And if you want to give a public access, for example, if you want to connect to this database from your local host or anywhere from the internet, so you need to give it a public access. So for now, we will go with the no option as we will only be accessing it with the EC2 instance that we will create in one of our next session. And then you have the VPC security group. So for the security group, you can see over here that we have choose existing option or either you can create a new group. So we will go with the choose existing one and which is the default one. So you can also see that the previous security groups that we created are also available over here, but we will go with the default option for now. And again, the same instructions that the EC2 instance, if you want an EC2 instance to be connected to this database, you need to make sure that the security group is also the same. And then you have the availability zone. So as we are working in North Virginia region, so the availability zone are all of these. So if you want, you can also select the availability zone as well. But as we are not interested in making a backup, so we will go with the no preference option. Then you have some additional configurations. So by default, it is a point to remember that the databases in AWS, the RDS databases in AWS uses 3306 port by default. So we will keep this same for now. And then it asks you like, what is the database authentication mode that you want to use? So we have password authentication, but if you want to apply more layers for security for this database, so you can go for password and IAM database authentication or password and KBROS authentication. So for now, we will keep it simple and we will go with the password authentication mode. Then we have some additional configurations. So you can give initial database name over here, then the database parameter group backup. So if you want a backup, you can also enable some automated backups as well. We will keep it nice and simple and won't enable the backups for now. Then you have the encryption. So encryption is enabled for this and the AWS KMS key will be used for this encryption. So it is the default provided by AWS itself. So we don't need to worry about it. And then if you want some monitoring and log export, so you can also go with that option as well. Moving on, then it shows you the estimated monthly cost. So as of now, we are using a free tier, so we don't need to worry about it. But if you are using a development template or a production template, then you do need to worry about it because Amazon RDS is going to cost you a lot if you do not consider the changes that you are keeping for your database. So keeping all of these things as settings as shown, let's create this database. All right, so now you can see that the database is being created and it is in the creating mode. It will take a couple of minutes to get it ready so that the database is ready and then we, we can use it for our further applications. So with this, I hope you have got an understanding of how you can configure the settings for your Amazon RDS database in AWS. In this session, we will look at how you can interact with your RDS database that you create inside your RDS instances. So for that, 
first thing first you can see over here that we have modified our rds instance that we created and what i've done is i have changed the publicly accessible status from no to yes this is because i wanted to access my databases from a third party tool which is mysql workbench so you can actually access it from any third party tool or from your ec2 instance so what we will do is we will go to the ec2 instance and connect to this rds that we created and now as you can see that it shows none so basically there are no databases inside this rds instance so we will go ahead and create a new database so i will create database and rds db1 hit enter and now here you can see that the database is created and i will go to my sql workbench and just refresh it so you can see that the rds db1 also exists over here as well we will go ahead and create a new database and this time from mysql workbench but before that if i just show you the databases that we have right now so you can see that we have rds db1 the sys is by default so rds db1 is the one that we just created so moving back we will create a new database from this mysql workbench so create database and let's name it as rds db2 run this query and you can see that the database has been created successfully just refresh it and you can also see the database appears over here but there are no tables as of now from the ec2 instance let's see and now you can see that the same rds database instance is also created over here as well let's move ahead and select one of the database and try exploring that how you can perform multiple sql queries in that database so i will go ahead and use the rds db1 so here we go now you can see that rds db1 is now selected so let's go ahead and create a table with the name customers so i already have a query saved with me you can also find it in the resource section as well so what this will do is it will create a table for customers and it will have id as integer type then the name of the customer as varchar variable type then the age address and the salary and the primary key so hit enter and now you can see that the table has been created so i will go to the mysql workbench and now you can see there is a drop down inside the tables as well and you can see that the customer table has been created with columns the one we have just provided the id name age address and salary you can also add some values to this database so let's say i want to add so here i am adding the first value so this is the id will be one then the name age the address and then the salary so hit enter i will add two more values over here so we have the second one and here we have the third one so now we have a database which contains these three values let's see how you can have a look at that so for that first i will show the tables so the show tables command will actually show you what are the tables that exist inside this rds db1 database so you can see that we have the customers table over here and then we will go ahead and perform a query that will show you the complete table like what are the data points inside this customer table so for that we will select star from customers table this is the very common query in sql hit enter and here you can see that we have the data points that we just created so this is pretty much it it is very simple to use and you can also see same queries can be performed from this database as well so for so the first thing first you need to tell the mysql workbench which database you want to use so we will be using rds db1 run this query so the query is successfully ex executed and now you can perform the queries so let's perform this query and here you can see the same data set that we created is also accessible from the third party tool as well so this is how you interact with your databases in rds with this i hope you have got understanding of interacting with your rds databases inside your aws account